Neural networks are a fascinating part of the AI world. To put it in extremely simple terms, neural networks are under the umbrella of machine learning AI. They are used in artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning because they mimic the way the human brain functions to identify patterns and find solutions to everyday issues. Today, we will be taking a deeper look at neural networking and figuring out how it works, its history, and much more. Before we begin though, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon. Oh, I'm sorry, I had to say it guys. <laughs> Let's get into it. Here's how it works in layman terms. Layers of nodes make up an artificial neural network, or an ANN, with the input layer, hidden layers, and the output layer being the most common types. Each artificial neuron, or node, in the network has a weight and a threshold that determines how strongly it responds to input from other nodes. The output of a node is considered to have crossed a threshold when it is sent to the next tier of the network. However, not every information is necessarily sent to the next network layer. Now, this may sound confusing, so let's try to understand this from the very beginning of neural networking. Most people underestimate the length of time neural networks have been around. Although the concept of a machine that thinks dates back to ancient Greece, we will concentrate on the pivotal moments that shaped the ever-changing way we see neural networks. It all started with a thesis published by Warren S. McCulloch and Walter Pitts in 1943. In this study, they aim to learn how interconnected neurons in the human brain generate complex patterns. The analogy between neurons with a binary threshold and Boolean logic is one of the most important insights to emerge from this study. It was in 1958 that Frank Rosenblatt, in his paper The Perceptron, a probabilistic model for information storage and organization in the brain, is credited with creating the perceptron which is the most basic neural networking theory. He expands on the work of McCulloch and Pitt by including weightings in the formula. Rosenblatt taught a computer to tell the difference between labeled cards. And finally, through the application of restrictions in backpropagation and its incorporation into the neural network design, Yan Li Kun presented a paper in 1989 that showed how this might be used to train algorithms. Using data from the United States Postal Service, this study successfully implemented a neural network to decipher handwritten zip code digits. Since the 1990s, these neural networks have advanced and taken a more efficient shape in today's world. Currently, each node is conceptualized as a separate linear regression model with input data, some form of bias, and an output. Having settled on an input layer, weightings may be implemented. These weightings help define the relative significance of the various inputs, with bigger weights having a greater impact on the final result. When calculating the output, each input is multiplied by its associated weight before being added to the others. After that, an activation function is applied to the output to finalize the result. When the output from a node reaches a certain level, it fires or activates and sends its information onto the next tier of the network. As a consequence, the output from one node is fed into the input of the next. This kind of neural network is known as a feed-forward network because data is fed from one layer forwards towards the next. Most deep neural networks simply have one-way communication between their input and its output. As I said before, this is known as feed-forward. Backpropagation, on the other hand, allows you to train your model in reverse, from output to input. With the use of backpropagation, we can determine and assign the error to each neuron, which in turn helps us to fine-tune and optimally match the model's parameters. There are also other types of neural networks, such as convolution, or CNN for short. Similar to feed-forward networks, convolution neural networks are used in areas like computer vision and image recognition. These networks use linear algebraic concepts, notably matrix multiplication, to detect repeating patterns in images. Another type is the recurrent neural network, 
And one distinctive feature of recurrent neural networks is the presence of feedback loops. When anticipating future events from a time series, such as the stock market or sales figures, these learning algorithms are heavily used. Now that you know what neural networks are and how they work, let's take a look at how they actually learn. When first introduced to data, ANNs often need a considerable quantity of it for training purposes. To train a network, one must first provide it with data and then instruct it on the desired outcome. As an example, in order to teach a network to differentiate between celebrity actor and non-actor faces, non-actors, masks, statues, and animal faces might all be used in the initial training phase. A matching identifier such as an actor's name or not actor or not human data is provided with each input. By providing the data, the model may refine its internal weightings and improve its performance going forward. For example, if nodes A, B, and C inform node X that the current input image is of Brad Pitt, while node D claims it is of Betty White and the training program verifies it is Pitt, X will reduce the weight assigned to D's input and raise the weight assigned to A, B, and C. Multiple principles are used by neural networks while establishing the rules and making judgments. This is specifically apparent when each node decides which data to pass on to the next layer, depending on the data it received from the layer below it. Methods such as evolutionary algorithms, Bayesian statistics, fuzzy sets, and gradient-based training fall within this category. To help them represent the data, you may provide them with some ground rules for how objects relate to one another. Instructing a face recognition system with rules like eyebrows are located above eyes or mustaches are below a nose, mustaches are above and or beside a mouth may speed up training and make the model more accurate sooner. However, it also introduces restrictions based on presumptions about the problem's nature, which might turn out to be unnecessary and harmful. So, now that we've pretty much covered everything about neural networks, there's just one misconception to clear up. Confusion sometimes arises from people using the term deep learning and neural networks interchangeably. If you ever confuse the two, Remember that the deep in deep learning simply refers to a number of layers in a neural network. A deep learning algorithm is a neural network with more than three layers. Two or three layer neural networks are considered to be very simple neural networks. One such deep learning AI to take a look at is Google's DeepTream. It was developed by Google developer Alexander Mordvinstev using algorithmic paraidolia and a convolution neural network. It gives purposely over-processed photos a surreal, psychedelic quality, reminiscent of lucid dreaming. Trying Deep Dream for yourself is one of the greatest methods to learn about it. In order to better understand how Deep Dream is able to identify and index specific sorts of photographs, Google made their dreaming machines public. Within seconds after uploading a picture to Google software, you'll be able to see a fantasy interpretation of your shot. The end product is usually a strange, hybrid digital picture as if Salvador Dali, Hieronymus Bosch, and Vincent van Gogh were drunk and painted all night. The shapes of leaves, rocks, and mountains change into whirling patterns of color, repeating geometric shapes and accentuated lines that flow with elegance. The barren environment is transformed by deep dreams into pagodas, automobiles, bridges, and human organs as well as many different creatures that Deep Dream observes. Thousands and thousands of different specimen of fauna. Simply upload a photo of Tom Cruise and the Google software will reimagine the wrinkles and gaps as recognizable animals. These aren't your run-of-the-mill creatures either, rather they're kaleidoscopic reimaginings that appear like they were inspired by LSD. They have an uncanny ability to evoke a sense of foreboding and frequently induce a shiver or two. Regardless of how fun the images are, the network's synthetic neurons function in its stacked layers. It's possible that Deep Dream might employ as few as 10 or as many as 30. Detail in a picture is revealed layer by layer. In the first layers, it's possible that just the most fundamental features of an image, such as 
its edges and boundaries are identified. Another layer may perhaps recognize distinct hues and angles. There might be other layers looking for things like chair and light bulb silhouettes. It's possible that the final layers will only respond to more complex things like vehicles, leaves and buildings. The researchers at Google have given this method a fancy name for this kind of neural network architecture, Inceptionism. They also put up a public exhibition with examples of Deep Dream's work for anyone to see. A variety of outcomes are possible when the network has identified certain features of a picture. Seeing this, you could be worried about the development of super-intelligent machines that take over the globe. But for the time being, these sorts of initiatives are of immediate value to everybody who uses the internet. Image recognition has come a long way in only a few years, allowing individuals to swiftly scan large amounts of visual content in search of relevant information. Google's daydreaming computers are helping pave the way for the rapid progress being made in picture recognition. Remember to subscribe for more tech videos on Technology Torrent.